next morning our captain, thinking the desert not very wide at this point, decided on striking across in a northeastern direction, which would shorten her out considerably if we could only be so successful as to surmount the difficulties of traveling through loose sand without water, as the streams descending from the mountain into the plain all sink. On the 16th of May, everything necessary for our dry tramp being in readiness, we started across the plain, which was done with a willing heart by almost every man, as we were all anxious to get home and had been traveling many days without getting any nearer. The traveling in the plain after passing the termination of the streams, we found to be extremely laborious. The sand lays quite loose, and as the wind would blow whilst driving our horses and cattle ahead of us, the sand would be raised up in such clouds that we could scarcely see them, which was very painful to our eyes. The first night in the plain we encamped at a large hole or well dug deep in the ground, which we supposed to be the work of Indians, and in which we found a small portion of stagnant water, but not half enough to slake the first of our numerous herd. The next morning we resumed our toilsome march at an early hour, finding our stock suffering greatly for the want of water. This day we traveled with as much speed as possible, with the hope of finding water whereat to encamp, but at length night arrived, and the fatigues of the day obliged us to encamp without water, wood, or grass. The day had been excessively warm, except when the wind would blow, and in the afternoon two of our dogs died for want of water. On examination, we found that the feet of many of our dumb brutes were completely crippled by the sand. Our situation at present seemed very critical. A dull, gloomy aspect appeared to darken the countenance of every member of the company. We were now completely surrounded with the most aggravating perplexities, having traveled two long days journey into the plain, and no idea how far yet to its termination. And from the manifestations of many of our most valuable stock, we were well convinced they could not endure these hardships much longer. To add vexation to our present difficulties, a violent altercation took place between the men as to whether we would proceed in our present direction or turn back to the mountain. A majority of the men were in favor of the latter, but Captain Walker, who'd never done anything by halves with a few others, were of the opinion that we were halfway across and could as easily proceed as return. On all such disputes on all former occasions, the majority decided on what steps should be taken. But when our captain was in the minority, and being beloved by the whole company, and being a man who also was seldom mistaken in anything he undertook, the men were very reluctant in going contrary to his will. The dispute created much confusion in our ranks, but fortunately, about midnight the captain yielded to the wishes of his men, and as it was cool and more pleasant traveling than in the daytime, we started back towards the mountain, intending to follow the same trail in order which we encamped on plain. Previous to starting, we took the hides off our dead cattle and made a kind of moccasin for such of our beasts as were lame which we found to be of great advantage as it effectually shielded their feet from the scouring effects of the sand. Nothing happened through the night and we moved carelessly along our trail, as we thought, but our feelings cannot be described at daylight when no signs of our former tracks could be discovered. Men were dispatched in every direction on search, but all returned without any tidings with which to comfort our desponding company. The compass told which direction we should go, but otherwise we were completely bewildered. Our horses, cattle, and dogs were almost exhausted this morning. The pitiful lamentations of our dogs were sufficient to melt the hardest heart. The dumb brutes suffered more for water than food, and these dogs, when death threatened to seize them, would approach the men, look them right in the face with the countenances of a distracted person, and if no help could be afforded, would commence a piteous and lamentable howl, drop down, and expire. When the day became warm, we slackened our pace and moved slowly forward, but without any hope of meeting with any water at least for a day longer. When night came, we halted for a short time in order to collect the men and animals together, which were scattered in every direction for a mile in width. At least we should get separated at night, as we intended to travel on without ceasing until we could find water or arrive at the mountain. When our forces collected together, we presented a really forlorn spectacle. At no time, Either while crossing the Rocky or California mountains did our situation appear so desperate. We had to keep our dumb brutes constantly moving about on their feet, for if they would once lay down, it would be impossible to get them up again, and we would then be compelled to leave them. Nor were the men in much better condition. It is true we had food, 
but our thirst far exceeded any description. At last, it became so intense that whenever one of our cattle or horses would die, the men would immediately catch the blood and greedily swallow it down. When our men had collected together and rested their wearied limbs a little, our journey was resumed, finding that the cattle and horses traveled much better at night than in daylight. We advanced rapidly this evening without any interruption, until about midnight when our horses became unmanageable, and contrary to our utmost exertions would go in a more northern direction than we desired. After several ineffectual attempts to check them, we thought perhaps it would be well enough to follow wherever they would lead. We had not followed our horses far until we discovered to our indescribable joy that the instinct of our horses was far more extensive and more valuable than all the foresight of the men, as we, unawares, came suddenly upon a beautiful stream of fresh water. We now had the greatest trouble to keep our beasts from killing themselves drinking water, in which we succeeded only in part, and were thus occupied until daylight when we countered our force for the purpose of ascertaining how much loss we sustained by undertaking to cross the desert and found that we had lost 64 horses, 10 cows, and 15 dogs. Zenith Leonard, Rocky Mountain Trapper.